Oh hey, you ever hate cups? Me neither. Speaking of which, there is this one difficult game where everyone keeps talking about. And you're either gonna appreciate it or just freaking dread it. Cuphead was announced on October 26, 2013 and was released on September 29, 2017 worldwide on PC and Xbox One, October 19, 2018 on the Mac, April 18, 2019 on the Switch, and July 28, 2020 on the PS4. The game was made by Studio MDHR, an indie video game development studio run by Jared and Chad Moldenhar. There are two types of levels of this game, one is the run and gun section and the other are the boss battles, both of which are pretty self-explanatory. And that's all about it, that's how simple the game gets. Moving on to the plot. Cuphead and Sparta Mugman are idiots, they're so stupid they went to the casino and when their lives are at stake they lost. And now they beg for their lives and in return they have to cause chaos in a mushroom kingdom. Now the gameplay. In most 2D shooter games, let's say Mega Man for example, you shoot using a blaster. In this game, you shoot with your fingers. I love it. There are a handful of different weapons to choose from, and all of them are pretty fun to use. They all have their advantages and disadvantages. I mainly use the spread attack as I can have a wide range of attacks. You also have a super attack which you can use by filling up the card meter on the bottom left. Like the main weapons, there are different special attacks. There is also the parry mechanic which allows you to parry pink objects. This is a risky trick to pull out as most of the pink objects throughout the entire game are enemies and projectiles. If you successfully parried an enemy or an attack, you get an additional card on your meter which really helps a lot. Let's talk about how the game looks. First off, the game looks stunning. No other game has ever tried this kind of art style before. Everything feels so lively, and sure, there are probably older games that have replicated this art style before, and there are most likely to be indie games that I've never heard of before, but this is the more major one to have topped it off. The animations in the game feel so fluid, and it really works well with how you move around. There are so many small details in both the foreground and the background. And not only does this game have the rubber hose animation, but they also accompanied it with a jazzy and catchy soundtrack. Wow, it really feels like I'm interacting with an old cartoon. Good day for I have to start the whole thing all over again? There are no checkpoints in any level, and every time you die, the game shows your progress through that level, which I guess can motivate you sometimes, but it is just painfully dreadful to see this. And not only that, but they also show a message of the enemy mocking the player. Up first, we have the running gun stages. There are two in each area of the game. In every run and gun stage, there are coins which you can use to unlock new abilities and weapons. The best part is that these stages aren't really required, that way you can just blast through the entire game just by fighting the bosses. But as someone who's a little bit of a completionist, I never skipped any of them. They're fun yet difficult challenges, though they're painstakingly long. Now let's talk about the main takeaway of the game. The bosses. They are Dark Souls bosses nerfed and disguised into cartoon characters. First up we have the slime from Dragon Quest. It's not a pretty difficult boss fight. It's really big and it moves really slow which gives you time to attack. As the first boss of the game, I think this guy needs some appreciation. Next up we have Decepticon Betty Boop. This is the first boss fight where you get to fight on a plane. There is this tutorial for it before you fight the boss. It's simple, like the opening tutorial as long as you're not a game journalist. This boss fight can be a bit challenging, but it takes at least a few tries, which happened to me. The next boss is a farm. You have to defeat 3 bosses. There are actually a total of 4 bosses here, and you can unlock the secret boss by not attacking the giant onion. It's a pretty easy fight, moving on. Next are boxing frogs. The first 2 phases are manageable, pretty much every incoming attack is easy to dodge. But when we get to the final phase, the two frogs turn into one and become a lottery machine. 
You have to parry the crank in order to damage them. Once you do, there are three faces that will appear on the white circles. Each one will summon their own drums. The snake drums have small drums which require you to drum continuously. The tiger drums have orange balls that float up and down with each platform. This is the stress inducing one. Lastly, we have the bull drums, which have red platforms in the middle of the screen that will shoot fire above or below you. This was the first boss that I struggled with. It's difficult. Finally, we have the sunflower. This is a pretty tough boss fight, just because there's so much stuff going on in the first place. The last phase can be a bit tough, but there isn't much stuff going on compared to the first phase. Moving on to the second area, Inkwell Isle 2, we have DJ Imi the Great. I wish today's DJs have this kind of name. This fight is the hardest yet. It really puts your piloting skills to the test. Because you're fighting on a plane, you have more wiggle room to move around, and because of that, the DJ uses attacks that spread around the entire screen, so you need to shrink in order to avoid the attacks. Who knew being an Asian is this helpful against a DJ? Anyway, this guy has a ton of faces. In fact, he has the most faces out of all the bosses in the entire game. There is also a sort of secret face you can unlock by turning into a tiny plane while the DJ is scanning you. This will skip the fourth phase but will make the final phase more difficult. This entire fight takes a ton of tries to beat, but it's far from impossible. Next is the average parent in Candy Crush. You have to beat a series of three randomized bosses before entering the final phase. In the last phase, she throws her head and it chases you wherever you go in addition to the giant candy rolling in the ground. The fight's not too hard, you just have to get lucky to get the easiest 3 bosses in the beginning and not get hit. Moving on, we have Balloon Clown. This is a pretty tough boss fight just because there isn't much room to move around. It's hard to keep on track of things because there's just so many stuff going on. But like I said earlier, nothing is impossible in this game. Next we have Chicken Run. This fight takes a few tries to beat, you just have to constantly move around in order to not get hit, like the part where the bird goes crazy and shoots a ton of feathers. It's not the hardest boss fight, moving on. For the final boss in the second area, we have King Ghidorah. This is the hardest one yet, you have to jump and move around the floating clouds while also avoiding his tail and the flaming meatballs. In the second phase, there are a bunch of little flaming dudes that jump and try to kill you. You can't tell where they're going to jump, so the only thing you can do is duck. Finally, in the last phase, flaming orbs will be shot at you. Be careful not to hit them as they become harder to dodge. They also have this flamethrower move that will fire in the middle, so try to get to the top so you have more wiggle room to move around. And that's pretty much it, this is by far the hardest boss fight yet. Let's move over to Inkwell Isle 3, we have B Movie except it doesn't make me question my existence. Just like the previous boss fight, you have to jump and move around the moving platforms. The first phase is nothing all too crazy, but when we get to the second phase, things start to heat up. The Queen Bee uses a variety of attacks, like a spear that will follow you around, a triangle that also follows you but shoots projectiles out of its corners, and missiles. In the last phase, she turns into a giant plane and is on the bottom of the screen. You'd want to use the lobber or the chaser weapon for this phase. I like this boss fight just because there's realism. Next we have American Captain Hook and the Living Ship. This is sort of a hard boss fight. You just have to keep track of incoming attacks which can be a bit hard especially in the last two phases. Overall, not the hardest but still a challenging fight. Up next, we have Dr. Robotnik and the Iron Giant. This is the same as the DJ fight, but much more difficult. There are so many things going on, and you're most likely to get hit every time. In the first phase, you can only hit the head, chest, and the abdomen. Certain attacks come from each of these parts. By destroying them, the Iron Giant will gain new attacks. The second phase is nothing special. Every now and then the giant robot's head continuously charges back and forth from off screen to damage the player. Then we get to the final phase. Eggman pulls out his speed. Dr. Robotnik pulls out either a blue or red gem from the robot's mouth. Both of these gems do spread attacks, much like the chicken boss from earlier. 
Not only do you have to dodge the attack, but you also have to avoid the electrified walls that will appear. I could say this is the hardest one yet, but I spent more time trying to beat the dragon, so that fight is still the hardest one. What well, about some easier boss fights at least? Next is Sally's Stage Blade. I'd say the second phase was the hardest. You have to avoid a ton of attacks while also paying attention to the background. There's this baby who throws bottles at you, so keep that in mind. Also in the last phase, you have to pay attention to the audience. They'll throw flowers at you that damage you for some reason. I like this kind of attention to detail in both the foreground and the background. That's what makes this game unique. Next we have German Rat. Just like the previous boss fight, most of the phases are easy, except the second phase. There isn't much room to move around here and you have to jump up and down to avoid the flamethrower attack. You also have to avoid the ball caps shaped like saw blades. Sometimes the ball caps extend individually, other times every ball cap on one side will extend so you have to keep moving to the other side. Overall, not the easiest but it's a quick fight. Next is Ariel. The first phase is not all too hard but it's not much easy as well. There are attacks that take most of the screen and you have to shrink in order to get some room. In the next phase, she can freeze you and you have to mash out of it. This gets more irritating in the last phase where she will freeze you and you'll get hit by the floating spikes. But other than that, it's passable. Finally, the last boss in the third area, we have spooky scary skeletons and shivers down your spine. This is a very challenging one. You have a platform that can follow the train in three different places, and will only move if the vaults on either end are parried. You have to keep an eye out for the floating pumpkins as they will drop pink objects that can also parry the vaults, causing the platform to move. They're pretty much the worst thing to exist in the first half of the fight, so it's best to take them out before they drop the pink object. In the first phase, you have to shoot and avoid the bouncing eyeballs headed towards you. Moving to the next phase, the conductor pops out and attacks by slamming his hands onto two spots. You have to move the platform beneath his head where you can damage him while also avoiding the flying pumpkins. Onto the third phase, the flying pumpkins will disappear and two heads will pop out and their only attack is raining down lightning that moves closer to each side. This attack is slow so you may have enough time to move around. You also have to avoid the ghosts that are chasing you. If you kill them, a pink skull will come out and will carry the vaults if ever made in contact, so be aware of that. In the last phase, in order to damage it, you must first parry the tail. Afterwards, the heart will become exposed which you can shoot and fire will come down after you. The grate will slam shut after a few moments, so you have to continuously parry the tail. This is the hardest one by far, just because of how many things are going on the screen and how long this fight takes. Moving on to the last area of the game, we're introduced to King Dice. This boss fight is the most unique and probably the most interesting of the bunch. In order to fight King Dice, you must play and finish the board by pairing the die. Whichever number you pick, you land on. The board compromises of save, start over, and fin spaces, and most importantly, the mini bosses. The spaces numbered 1 through 9 are the spaces which contain mini bosses. Some spaces have randomly generated hearts which give you an extra life. Every mini boss is somewhat easy, but you have got to make sure you have enough hearts once the actual battle commences. King Dice only has one attack where he will send a row of cards. Some of the cards are pink so they can be parried. The problem here is that you'll lose a ton of hearts if you're not careful. Thankfully, after he finishes his attack, you can deal damage as he charges for the next attack. This is the longest boss fight I have fought, and probably the hardest one yet. Finally, we move on to the devil. This is the most tense fight yet, but it isn't the most challenging in my opinion. The devil attacks using either his pitchfork or just by transforming, both of which have three different variations. There are also minions that will come from either side, but they are easily killed. After getting enough damage, the devil will pull out his skeleton and escape through a hole leading to the next area. In the second phase, the devil grows into a giant, making it an easy target to hit. There are 5 floating platforms that you can stand on. You have to avoid the axe that moves in a spiral motion and the flaming poker chips that will fall down on either platform. There is also the bat bomb that can be parried. If you fail to parry it, the bomb will make a massive explosion, so keep that in mind. 
In the next phase, the devil gets angry and the floating platforms will be reduced to 3, making it easier for you to get hit by incoming attacks. He will summon two of his minions from both sides to shoot skulls at you, which can be parried. Above you, there is a group of small blue-winged demons that hone in on you. Then we get to the final phase where the devil is now crying. There is now only one platform in the center. You have to dodge the fallen poker chips while avoiding the devil's tears, which can be parried. After enough damage, you have defeated the devil and finished the game. Cuphead and Mugman ran back to town and freed all the debtors and were honored for their heroic actions. The end. That's pretty much it about the game. Overall, I love every single boss in the game. All of them are unique in their own ways. I have yet to find a single boss that is similar to another boss. But I'm glad that's over. Anybody up for Ayla?